Yeah. Today I'm going to talk about grief and loss. The reason being because each and every one of us is going to experience it at some point in our life and it has been a very profound experience in my life over the last few years. Losing loved ones that are very close to you has a very profound effect on your life and how we process that is going to be very unique for each and every one of us. Losing my mum and dad very close to each other over well, four years ago now had a very uh, impactful presence in my life. And I think it's important to understand that no matter how or who you lose, it's always going to be a shock to the system. Trauma is a very big part of death that we don't acknowledge, but it happens to each and every one of us, no matter how the person dies, whether they were diagnosed with an illness, and we think that we, we know that they're going to die, or if it was a car accident. It is still a trauma and a shock to all of us. The reason for this is because we don't talk about death, we don't acknowledge that death is even part of our existence until it is in our existence. Losing someone and gr the grieving process is very unique to each of us, like our DNA. Our DNA holds every memory, every moment, all our experiences. And so when we process something like death or loss, it's going to be very unique and individual to us, personal to us. There is no right or wrong way, there's just the way that it's happening for you, to you, with you. I know that in my own experience, it took me a little while to realise that I was grieving until I hit like rock bottom last year and literally disconnected from myself, uh, emotionally, physically, mental breakdown, some people will call it, and I stopped. Life stopped for me. I couldn't work, I couldn't walk out of the door and ventured to dark, dark places that I never thought I would see light again. When you lose someone that's very close to you and part of your everyday existence, it has a profound immediate effect. Not always immediate actually, it's immediate in physicality, but then as time goes on, the understanding that your life has changed forever starts to, starts to become clear. And that is something that we deal with, we, we're, we're learning to deal with also, the huge change that has happened. It's not only that we have lost the person that we love so dearly, but we've lost the life that we've ever known. And it is transitioning into a new way of living and being without this person in your world. If you're going through grief, I want to say to you, be kind to yourself. There are very dark places that we may go to, there are very high places, but it is an ebb and a flow. And it is a constant, constant, a co it's a constant with us. I was watching a video the other day and she was a woman that lost a daughter and she now says she has a new companion called Grief. And some days her companion visits and it's in huge waves. And at other times it is ebbs and flows. So understanding that there is no beginning or end to grief that is just part of our process now and part of our life. For once you've lost someone that you've loved deeply, it, it changes you forever and you start to understand life in a very different way. If you are going through grief, I wish to say just yes, be kind to yourself. Reach out to those that you love. Reach out to those that love you. Reach out to groups, places and people that support you. And this may be very foreign to you to do, but for me, it was a saving grace. Sometimes within one family, the grief process is very, very different and how we choose to grieve or how we are grieving is going to be very different. So to rely on friends or family is not always the way it's going to be. Some families come together and grieve the same, which is very unique, um, but the unique people that we are, we, we all do it in our own way. And so connecting to a group, which I did, which was a saving grace for me, they weren't connected to, to any of my family members, but they understood my pain, they understood where I was, and to share with some people that, that weren't in the same boat 
of my family, but understood the grief and the sorrow and the sadness, the anger, the rage, the confusion was so comforting. And I attended that group weekly. I still attend, not weekly, but I still attend. And it is an absolute blessing. There is a misconception that there are five stages to grieving, and I will acknowledge that there are the five different stages, if not more, um, Kubler-Ross method it's called, and the stages they say of denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and then acceptance. I would want to say to you, they, they don't happen in, in chronological order. That's not, that's the process and I'm done now. No, that doesn't happen like that. Basically, it happens whenever it wants to happen. You will feel rage, you will feel anger, you will feel acceptance, you will feel denial, you will want to bargain, you will feel depression, you will feel all these different things at different times. And when they come and go and how they come and go will be up, it will, not up to you, but it will be in your life experience. And there will be different triggers in every one of our lives. To be authentic and to let whatever's coming through come through is really the best thing you can do. I know it might sound a bit odd or be odd to be, be in a shopping centre and you hear a song that reminds you of your mum or your daughter or your dad or whatever and you cry. It's just one of those things. It's just life, I know. Or you're in your car or you're with someone that doesn't understand or you're in a car and someone's put on the radio and a song comes on or it's triggered. Just allow yourself to feel those feelings if you can because it's the best way to heal in grief. Know that no matter where you go in emotion, your mind, your physicality, wherever you go, no matter how dark or deep you feel you're going in grief, know that there is light, light at the end of the tunnel. There is not going to be the end date or you'll always be missing that person or you'll feel the loss or the sadness. But there will come a time, I promise you, there will come a time where you will look back with more love and joy in your heart than sorrow and sadness. No matter how dark or deep you may feel at this time, know that there is a time waiting for you that is lighter. Don't let anyone tell you to get over it, to just move on, to get back to work, just keep busy. Some people like to keep busy, some people need to do things, whatever it is that gets you through is okay. There is no right or wrong way to grieve. As a spiritual person or understanding spiritualism or spirituality and life everlasting, I believe in infinite life. So I don't believe we die, that we just shed our physical bodies. It was still very difficult for me to lose my family, my mum, my dad, my niece, my, a good friend of mine. Just because you know these things, it doesn't make the pain go away quicker or any easier. So for those of you who are spiritual and for those of you that think that you've got to process this and you've got a handle on it, seriously. But just allow those emotions to run through you and they may be deeper than you ever, ever had known. Allow them through and you'll come to a time where you know life is infinite and that you will be okay with all of that. Accepting that someone's past is a very interesting concept because yes, they have passed and they're no longer in your physical, physical life. But knowing that they're around you and looking for those little signs that you know that they're telling you that you're there, that, that's a little thing that can help lift your spirit. And it doesn't matter who believes you or doesn't believe you, it's all about you knowing what you know inside of your heart. For those supporting someone in grief, just be there for them. All you need to do is be there. All you need to say is, I'm here for you. I love you. Make them a cup of tea, do their dishes. Just be there for them and allow them to be and do and feel whatever they need to be, do and feel. This is the greatest gift that you can give. I, I recommend not to say move on, get over it. It's been four years now. Why are you still grieving? Are you still going to the grief group? Um, you know, it's, it's, these aren't helpful things. For you don't get over someone. You don't move on. You open life in a new way. It's like opening a new chapter, even a new book for some of us. And saying, this is a life, a new life now without the people that I've loved. 
So for those supporting another in grief, just be there and tell them, I'm here for you. And if you don't know what to say, be authentic. You just say, I don't know what to say, but I want you to know that I love you and I'm here for you. That's the greatest advice I can give. Know that there is no right or wrong in how you grieve. Know that life is infinite and know that we are loved, whether we can see the, our loved ones on the other side or not, and the family around us. Reach out to people if you are grieving and connect for this is going to be your greatest, greatest, greatest strength. Remember your spirit. Remember your spirit is your strength. No matter how dark you are feeling, the strength of your spirit is infinite and we can allow our mind body and our emotional body loop in a, in, a, in a downward cycle, which does happen and that's okay if it does, but know that your spirit is stronger and that your power is in that spirit, that inside spirit that you know and that's what kept me alive. Going into dark places last year, I disconnected from life, from social media. I disconnected from everything. I had a nervous breakdown and had to just recollect myself. It took time and I didn't think I was going to be here now, but I am. And that was because I drew upon my strength of spirit. And when I felt those moments of weakness, those moments of, I don't want to be here anymore, I reached out to somebody that knew where I was mentally. Living alone as well can be a very, very very difficult process but know that you're in a place and that, that that you're never left alone and that whoever you need is there for you in spirit but also in the physical world all you have to do is grab onto your spirit and reach out all those spiritual people just let that pain through let it through for we just need to clear it for the karma What's happening on the planet now is that we are processing death in a new way and we're experiencing death in a new way. And in time, we're basically processing, we're processing new ways of, tr of transitioning. And in time, in time, death won't be such a heavy, dense emotion, a heavy, dense, taboo subject to talk about for we are we are infinite and there will come a time where we will be able to celebrate life everlasting. The time is not yet, but we are here as people on the planet processing it and transitioning it into a new way. I hope that makes sense. But I want you to go away knowing that you are loved, I love you, and that you are unique. The un as unique as your blood, your DNA, your fingerprints, your, your, your laugh, your smile, your everything. And you are loved and we are in this together and that you have the power to bring your love and gifts to this world. And grief is just one process that we are going through and one thing that we can get through and get to a lighter way of living. And once we have passed that heavy sadness You will see life differently and you will be stronger, I promise. May you go in God's love and light and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Blessings. Talk to you soon. Bye.